we're getting crappy so quick. i will always talk to everybody those of you who know me know that i will talk to the police officers i will shake their hands i will tell them that we're praying for them when we were down in la at the western petroleum conference i talked to as many conference participants as possible we all have to move forward together or none of us gets to move forward so i don't have an enemy in my heart i will talk to everybody and i encourage all of you to do the same don't be afraid to talk to these people don't be afraid if you have an opportunity to talk to the ceo of chevron take it if you have an opportunity to talk to the federal trade commission people take it they need to see that we're regular people now most of the oil industry people will lie right to your face that's been my experience but at least they're having to talk to me so anytime you get an opportunity to talk to somebody who from appearances looks like they might be on another side of a line the imaginary line that we've all created take it let's erase those lines who else has something to share we all have information let's share it yeah can i say so um First of all, I'd like to thank you guys for, for coming and supporting and organizing the rally. It's important that we come and show up, to show our support for the Mother Earth, for the Idol of the Morgue, and for the whole the whole movement. Um, it, seems to be, it seems to be the women have been the backbone of this movement coming up, uh, where that's been coming, you know, that's been going on since in December, you know, when I don't know, I don't know more movement started in Canada. And if it wasn't for those four ladies to bring attention to what the Canadian government was trying to push through, push those bills through, we might not have ever known. You know, we might not have ever known for what those four women did. And um, I got to meet the one, one of the founders, Sylvia. Excuse me, Sylvia. And I met her at the United Nations at the Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues. And she's a, she's a real informed activist lady. You know, she's an attorney. And, and all she does is travel. As she travels, as she informs, she gives teachings on not only more movement and there are issues going on there at Beaver Creek and, and all of that, you know? And um, so I totally support the I don't know more movement what they're doing. And I think in California, one of our big issues right now is the fracking that, that Governor Brown signed in a bet where they allowed the fracking without any, um, they, they looked at the moratorium. Right? On fracking. So the only the only thing that's gonna block a company from fracking is they need approval from a government regulator. And that's all it takes, and then they can continue on. And they've been going on for years to unregulated in, in California. You know? So we have our own front lines right here. We got the tar sands coming into Richmond, we got the fracking, we got the fracking going on, you know, throughout the whole state, which as you stated, it's going to poison all our groundwater. You know, you know there's no safe fracking. It's been proved that there is no safe fracking. And for them to push that through, uh, from what I understand, they contributed several million dollars to the campaign in that. You know, so I don't know exactly what's behind it, but there's a lot of research and a lot of investigating to go, you know, to find out, you know, the ins and outs. And um, when we were at the permanent forum on indigenous issues, that's a worldwide forum at the UN. It's a whole global forum for indigenous people from the seven regions. The Arctic, Latin America, North America, uh, the islands, Asia, Russia. There's uh, seven global regions and indigenous peoples come from all over to for a two-week forum. And uh, one of the main one of the main topics every day on the agenda was was uh, toxicity, toxicity and, and uh, to toxic environment um, initiated by the corporations and all the problems that it causes on the people, you know, on women, on children, and reproductive issues. And it was a big topic every day in every region, you know. So this, um, so I really believe that that this movement and our our coming to represent. The earth and I don't more but it's very important, especially in an area this size. So I appreciate everybody coming out and support. It's, it's a huge issue. We all have to do our part somehow. Otherwise, it's not going to get hurt. You know. So thank you.
kayla johns and i'm from northern arizona, the navajo reservation and i want to say good day to everyone and um thank you for all being here and i come from a, a community that's been dealing with coal mining um, and the destruction of our groundwater because of coal mining and i just wanted to offer my support to idle no more for this day of action because it's really important that we stand together in solidarity as indigenous peoples that are still trying to protect our sacred mother and our sacred connection to these homelands. And before man-made laws, we understand, we still understand this connection. And it is interesting because being here in this part of the country, um, there's a lot of distraction and it is you know, it's nice to um, come together and, and just put our, our good energy and thoughts out in solidarity with everybody that is trying to, you know, amplify our voice as Indigenous peoples and the commitment we have for our children and our future generations to um, to be strong, really, you know, and, and it does get challenging and, you know, I've been organizing within my community for over 10 years and it's, it's a struggle. We're up against some of the biggest industries, uh, coal industries, oil and gas industries, and when you have an economy that's built on fossil fuel development, it is really challenging to, to transition off that economy. And so we become a part of this system of, a, you know, it, it, it's, it's going to take a while for us to break through and, and look at other options for economy. And so, you know, and, and the coal that comes from my community has supplied electricity for California, a supply electricity for Nevada. We built the city of Los Angeles. We built the city of Las Vegas. We built Tucson and Phoenix. And they continue to depend on our coal and our water for their, you know, their, 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 their development. So as we are talking about, you know, when we flip on the switch, we really got to understand the connection we have to that electricity, whether it's coming from the sun or whether it's coming from coal or oil and gas. And I just wanted to say that I, I stand in solidarity with all the idle no more actions today because it's the same challenges we're facing, the same corporations we're facing in an economy that we're stuck in that's so dependent on the destruction of our Mother Earth and destruction of our homelands and our waters. And, um, you know, and I, I, I currently reside in o um, Oakland, which is like, you know, about a year now I've been here and I do go back and forth between here and Arizona and continue my work there and, and trying to push for a transition to renewable energy and um, and I just want to say that you know thank you for the organizers to pull this together here and all of you you know to stand in solidarity making the signs and just organizing self I know it's it's a lot of work and so I just want to appreciate the people and um, you know across Turtle Island and, and across the world that are you know standing up for the protection of our mother earth and our father sky and you know, our way of life, and um, so I just wanted to say a little bit of that much, and um, you know, if there's any support that I can lend here, and I, I wanted to, I want to do that in the Bay, and I'm still really new to the, the area, and I'm, you know, wanting to get to know a lot more of the community here, and I just want to also say um, thank you to the Lone and Miwok, the, the people here, this is their home, and thank you for having us here, and, and, and um, on your homeland and in this beautiful place that I feel like um, is generating, has a powerful energy here in the bay that I can feel being close to the ocean and the bay. Um, there's a lot of innovation and creativity coming from here and I can definitely feel that. And so the spirit, you know, um, it, it's still here and living and I think we just need to um, come together more often. environment 
unfortunately decided to give governor jerry brown an environmental award called the right stuff environmental award maybe some time later somebody could walk over and see if that is cyril magnus street because i think that's the hotel is it does anybody know well i think that might be the hotel we'll be at on the 17th it's the park 55 and it's the oh yeah i don't i don't know if there's two of those hotels or not though so somebody's somebody it's 55 zero oh it is okay so that's where we're going to be how convenient on the 17th because that's where they're going to be giving jerry brown the right stuff environmental award the building right there huh? and so there's been uh, there's been several people working on organizing it including me none of the local environmental groups would sign on to support this action because there's late because of labor so on the committee of people that that chose him jerry brown to get the award there's two or three <coughs> labor representatives on that committee and so none of the environmental organizations would go against labor essentially that said there are lots of people who are members of these big environmental organizations who will be there as individual people standing up for their own personal beliefs about jerry brown getting a, he should be getting the wrong stuff of environmental award and so um we're focusing on three maybe four issues i brought red to the table the carbon trading scheme that violates indigenous people's rights living in forests for thousands of years who've been taking care of them it's a trick all of the carbon trading scheme stuff it's a trick it's and what it, what it does is it allows chevron where i live in my community that's been poisoning my community since 1903 it allows them to go down and buy or lease or rent say the zapatista people's forest saying that that forest they buy these parts of that forest that they're buying the air the clean air that that forest is producing and saying well we're buying this clean air over here so it gives us the right to pollute my community now those forests are already doing that they're already cleaning the air it's a way of buying air we knew it was coming and that's what it is so the other thing it does is that it does not mandate that chevron spend the money to on the existing technology to clean their emissions it's cheaper to buy these carbon credits than it is to install the technology to clean the air in richmond and everywhere else so that's what i don't know more it's going to be doing there that's what, why we're going to be there the other issue is fracking which affects everybody everywhere whether or not they live in a fracking community it's destroying the water the other issue is water the jerry the jerry brown wants to build those twin tunnels that takes water out of the delta and essentially is taking it to the big agricultural corporations in the valley it's a new peripheral canal yeah it's a new peripheral canal and then the other the other topic that might be brought up that day is sequa we need we're still looking for somebody to speak on the fracking we can't if can you can anybody here are they well enough versed to speak on fracking that night just for two or three minutes well, I'm gonna put it out there because we need a speaker on fracking. Some of the big, you know, high level at organizers and activists, they're reluctant to get involved because of labor. So, so if you guys know how to get a hold of me on Gathering Tribes Facebook page, so you can message me there. Um, so come, it'll be fun. Bring your signs. Where there, I think some of the there's actually going to be some labor people that are coming on board to protest Jerry Brown's um, trying to break up unions and how he's dealt with the BART strike and that that. So there's going to be a lot of different things going on. I don't know why 
they decided to give him an award. Um, we should all probably call the Blue Green Alliance. They're here in San Francisco and ask them. I'm going to do that today. Ask them why they chose Jerry Brown. It's ridiculous that they chose him. It's definitely a political thing. Phil Angelides is the chairman of the committee that chose him. So, and the tickets to get in for the dinner part are $300. And the tickets to get into the high powered reception that night, I'm pretty sure, I remember they start at $2,500. So this is a big fundraiser for the Blue Green Alliance. And it's an opportunity for people to spend a lot of money. It goes up to, I think 10,000 or 25, it goes up to more money than I can imagine buying a ticket. I can't even do $300. But anyway, it's it's the reception is going to be these high-powered politicos again behind closed doors that we can't afford to get into, making decisions because that's how stuff works, right? So come, it'll be fun. We'll have fun. So the press the press conference there that night is at six o'clock. We're asking people to get there at five thirty. Um, it'll be over at seven thirty. There's uh, I've heard that there's a lot of entrances into that building, and probably we're going to want to have some. We're going to need to find where the parking garage is because that's where Jerry Brown's going to go into the building in his, you know, big limousine. So we want to make sure he's. Today is the day that they signed with the proclamation. Today is the day. That's why they chose today. But we've been resisting a lot of Indians. Because we know what a government shutdown is. We already been through that. They now are prepared for civil unrest in America with foreign troops. They buying food rations, Peter mills, and water supply and ammunition. Just recently, they hired about almost 800,000 work furlough back on employment. Reason why? Because some of them are going to FEMA camps. Some of them are going for natural disaster preparedness agencies. They are getting ready. The government shutdown hasn't even really Explain the worst yet to come. Because the worst is the U.S. debt ceiling. When we reach it around mid October, we are in trouble in America. The WIC program has been cut off. They are stealing formula out of the infant's mouth for a bomb in Syria to kill possibly children of another country. We need to pay attention because they passed $5.5 billion for defense before the government shut down. And it has been found that one of the places in Canada was sponsoring and looking out about this. And it's sad. It's like I was trying to tell people last year, last month, it's going to be a government shutdown, the budget crisis. We need to pay attention. It seems like they rather lock one of us up that's homeless 
then lock up somebody that's poisoning our water. Yeah, damn straight. Somebody that's doing this oil thing and these fracking and the they nuclear make money power plants all on the coast. Fukushima is the worst thing, we, natural disaster we can think of right now with 300 tons of radiation spilling in the water and the fish out there are bo boiling. It's not mentioned. Blood the coming out the eyes. These things we gotta eat. I gotta take a break here, man. My battery's about ready to go dead, folks. You can't eat those. I'll be right back. And so, one of the natural things.